Hello friends, this is Sonu and from today I will be discuss about the all water soluble vitamin. We already discussed, uh, discussed about all four fat soluble vitamin. That's why now we have to discuss about the water soluble vitamin. That's why from today we will discuss about the all water soluble vitamin. So the first vitamin of the water soluble that is the vitamin B1 or thiamine. Why the B1? Because the, it's first discovered. That's why the name is put vitamin B1. The all vitamin B complex is belong to the water soluble along with the vitamin C also that is the ascorbic acid. So we will discuss individually one by one vitamin. First we will discuss about the vitamin B1. So let's talk about but before that the uh, uh, vitamin B1 let's talk about the very significant uh, differences about the fat soluble and the water soluble. So let's talk about that what is the fat soluble and water soluble. Here is the fat soluble and here is the water soluble. The first difference is that is the for the absorption of the vitamins for the fats need bile salt. So we can say bile bile acid but in a water no need means without bile salt it can be absorbed second main difference that need lipoprotein for the transporting of the all fat soluble for example calomicron but here no need Second, I mean third, it can absorb, for example, it can be stored, but no store, means our main storage point of the all fat soluble vitamin that is the liver and some adipose tissue, but in water soluble it will not absorb. So and next one. Uh, it has hypervitaminosis toxicity. Hyper vitaminosis toxicity. But here, no. Even in a hypervitaminosis of the water soluble, all water soluble vitamin, it can be not significantly toxic effect. But in the fat soluble, obviously we can see the patient has hypervitaminosis or, or toxicity of the fat soluble vitamin. So these are the main and one thing also that the water soluble vitamin has it has you will function as a cofactor. What is a cofactor? Cofactor it is the non-protein molecule or we can say metallic ion that need for the enzyme activity or we can say that is it's a helper molecule to catalyze the reaction or accelerate the reaction. So all vitamins B complex are uh, work as a cofactor. But if we talk about the fat soluble vitamin, out of the four fat soluble vitamin A, D, K, E, K has a very, uh, we can say it also work as a cofactor, but not uh, like a vitamin B complex or not significantly. And all three vitamin have not any cofactor. That's why we can say that it has a role as a cofactor, but vitamin uh, fat soluble vitamin so don't have any co uh, cofactor characteristics. So these are the major uh, differences between water soluble and fat soluble. That is the very important to know. So now let's talk about start the vitamin B1. Vitamin B1 also known as thiamine. That is a chemical name. Thiamine or thiamine, whatever you can call. It. Okay. So. Vitamin B1 or thiamine has three forms TPP thiamine pyrophosphate and TTP thiamine triphosphate triamine 3 TMP thiamine monophosphate but the thiamine pyrophosphate approximately 80% mainly found in the body thiamine triphosphate is 10% uh, mainly found in the brain and the rest is a 10% is mainly found in the body but we can say that the main significant role or 
active uh, active form of the vitamin that is vitamin B1 that is the need for the body that is the thiamine pyrophosphate this all working by uh, by the, this thiamine pyrophosphate vitamin that's why it's a uh, we can say activated form of the uh, vitamin B1 that is the thiamine pyrophosphate so now we'll discuss about that how vitamin B1 its work in the body or how it's a function they take part in the functions so oxidative decarboxyla decarboxylation reaction what is the oxidative decarboxy reaction oxidative de decarboxylation reaction this is a oxidation reduction reaction which removal of the carbon dioxide from the carboxylic acid or we can say carboxylic acid that is a coh coh so during the reactions the co2 will remove from this molecule that is the oxi oxidative decarboxylation reactions and in the oxidative decarboxylic uh, decarboxylation reactions has this types of enzyme that is the pyruvate dehydrogenase complex alpha keto glutarate dehydrogenase complex branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase complex and trans ketolase this enzyme is take part in the body for the metabolism of the different types of molecule so pyruvate dehydrogenase complex this is the mainly uh, is a metabolism of the carbohydrate or breakdown of the carbohydrate and as we know that the carbohydrate from the carbohydrate it's convert in the glucose and glucose is the major source of the energy because glucose is a go in the uh, Krebs cycle and from the ADP to ATP it produces the energy that is the major part of source of the energy <coughs> second one alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogen complex the same thing it also take part in the pyruvate dehydrogenase and uh, also to produce the energy from the carbohydrate branch chain alpha keto acid dehydrogenase complex it's take part in the amino acid branch chain of the amino acid for example isoleucine valine like that amino acid and uh, metabolize or break down of the amino acid second one transcatalase the transcatalase it's take part in the pentose phosphate pathway this is also like a parallel to the glycolysis for the energy sources so this all enzyme is depend on the vitamin B1 or TPP, thiamine pyrophosphate. So in the absence of the thiamine pyrophosphate, this enzyme will not work at all. That's why we need vitamin B1 to work in a normally or we can say good working for this enzyme. We need vitamin B1, mainly TTP. And from working of this enzyme, as we know that the, this this four enzyme is the v major take part in the, our body during the carbohydrate metabolism, during the different types of metabolism, different types of, uh, we can say, sources of the energy. We need this types of enzyme. And this enzyme is dependent upon the thiamine pyrophosphate. So absence of thiamine pyrophosphate, this enzyme will not work and we cannot get enough energy <coughs> and enough uh, different types of sources, chemical sources. So from there, all types of this enzyme working, this types of function is, uh, we can say, provide our body. The first function, they provide energy. How they provide energy? As I said that from the carbohydrate metabolism, from the glucose, because it is break down in the glucose and glucose, oh, finally it's break down in the ATP because the glucose is the energy. So it's provide energy. Second, protein fat breakdown. The plant gen alpha keto acid. Obviously, during the carbohydrate metabolism, along with the pyruvate dehydrogenase, some other enzyme also take part. We will not discuss, I'm not discussing here uh, biochemistry of the carbohydrate metabolism. Just and a briefly information I'm giving by the uh, for the vitamin B1, that how it's a help to the body. Second one regulate the function of the cardiovascular system endocrine system and digestive system as well as so lack of the vitamin b1 the uh, it will not regulate the function of the carbo, uh, uh, cardiovascular system the, it can problem in endocrine system and digestive system how we will discuss later when we will discuss the deficiency of the vitamin b1 <coughs> it also take part in the synthesis of the a major neurotransmitter that is one of the major important neurotransmitter 
that is acetyl choline synthesis and also maintain the nerve impulses obviously if the acetyl choline synthesis will be inhibit or it will be decrease the concentration obviously uh, the nerve impulses will be automatically disrupted how obviously we know that the all neuron which come from the brain tall the cholinergic neuron and this all neuron is secrete the acetyl choline and then it will be uh, the all types of neuron will be stimulated so absence of acetyl choline not possible to uh, maintain the nerve impulse also it's immunity booster because that source of energy so also it's a immunity booster it's a maintain the our immunity second and then help to secrete hydrochloric acid in a stomach so vitamin b1 also take part in the hcl secretion after that help to develop the myelin sheath in the neuron so it also take part in the synthesis of the myelin in the neuron that is the prote uh, the protection of the neuron that is the myelin sheath in the neuron <coughs> then fight with stress during the stress it also help so we can say anti stress vitamin it also maintain the vision for example the um, problem who have cataract or glaucoma so those persons if the vitamin b1 level is the normal so they can uh, feel better or they can uh, see the good like that means in a or in a normal persons like us if we, uh, we are taking the normal vitamin b1 so maybe the chances of the development of the vision problem is uh, uh, the percentage become will be decrease as compared to the those person who is not taking vitamin b1 there also it's a prevent to memory loss so for the remembering cap uh, capacity also maintain the vitamin b1 so these are the main along with this function also some other functions are doing the vitamin b1 but these are the main significant function and this all functions depend upon the this enzymes which are going to oxidative decarboxylic reactions so now let's discuss about that what is the source of the vitamin b1 how we can take from where we can take one thing also i would like to say that transketolase this is a transfer of the keto group during the pentose phosphate pathway already i said but this uh, during the deficiency of the vitamin uh, b1 this transketolase are decrease the activity of the in the erythrocyte let's write here that it decrease the vitamin b1 so decrease the activity of erythrocyte so by by there uh, means by here we can diagnose the the if the decrease the activity of erythro, uh, erythrocyte in transketolase so we can say that the person has deficiency or lack of the vitamin b1 because during the vitamin maintain and i mean not normal level of vitamin b1 or increase or we can say a person will taking a lot of vitamin b1 on the time the activity of or in erythrocyte is the transketolase is the increase so we can say that the the person don't have any vitamin b1 deficiency but if this will be in decrease so we can say that person has vitamin b1 deficiency so this is one of the diagnosis method that is uh, we have to know So let's talk about that sources of the vitamin B1. Source of vitamin B1. Plant source and animal source. in plant source we can take all types of vegetable 
then carols, then pulses. After that, in a milk also we can uh, take the vitamin B1. Then all grain product, all types of grain product. For example, wheat, jaw, then nuts. In nuts, we can found uh, vitamin B1. After that, oil seed. Oil seed. And in animal sources, pork liver, pork liver, heart, kidney. In these types of animal source, we can get vitamin B1. And also in a plant source, that is a rice. But in a normal rice, usually nowadays, the rice is become very polished, polished rice. So the polished rice has very lack or very less vitamin B1. And during the cooking, if the most probably the person will drain the rice during the cooking, or we can say after if the rice will already make on the time the person will cook the or uh, sorry it's a drain the rice and then whatever amount of liquid which is the drained this in this liquid have a mainly or significantly vitamin B1. So the and after the drain that rice is the means after the cook after the drain that rice present that rice have very lack of vitamin b1 that's why the uh, polished rice or the we can say ricey water rice water after In a polish rice, lack of vitamin B1 and in the rice water after the cook, it means the after the drain, in this liquid have vitamin B1 and very significantly amount. So nowadays the person will drain and eat the rice. So on, on those rice, they don't have enough vitamin B1 because they already drained and the liquid have significant vitamin B1. So that's why uh, this information means who's uh, eating a lot of rice, they have to know about the this information. Means if they will drain the water, they drain the rice liquid, so they drain the all significantly vitamin concent vitamin B1 concentration, and the rest rice means the, whatever the rice they have and they have to eat, and, they, and that rice have don't have enough vitamin B1. So these are the major source of the vitamin B1 along with all some other also product have vitamin B1 but these have very richest amount of the vitamin B1. Let's now talk about that what could be the deficiency or problem can be start if the vitamin B1 is deficient. First of all, if the vitamin B1 become deficient or lack of the vitamin B in the body, so those enzymes who is dependent on the thiamine pyrophosphate, automatically those enzymes will be inhibit or interrupt or slow. So what will be happen? If person will taking, for example, I will take carbohydrate, but I don't have enough vitamin B1 and vitamin B1 without vitamin B1 the oxidative decarboxylation reaction will not catalyze, will not accelerate. So, for example, pyruvate dehydrogenase. Let's talk about the pyruvate dehydrogenase. So, pyruvate dehydrogenase. Let's write full name. Pyruvate dehydrogenase. This is the enzyme. So lack of the vitamin B1, this enzyme will not catalyze, this enzyme will not work. And what will be happen? 
it will be accumulate accumulate in body mainly plasma and also excrete in urine also ex excrete in the urine so the normally the pyruvate will not penetrate the blood brain barrier normally if the person will normal vitamin b1 and that taking the carbohydrate so it will be break down it will metabolize normally but if deficient the vitamin b1 so pyruvate will penetrate blood brain barrier if the vitamin b1 deficient so it's accumulating accumulating the concentration of the pyruvate in the blood is very high due to the lack of the thiamine pyrophosphate so it's penetrate the blood brain barrier and start the problem means it's inhibit the metabolism of the cns or obviously all over the body and it can be start the dysfunction of the neuron so we can say that in a chronic deficiency of the vitamin b1 can we suffer polyneuritis polyneuritis so this is the uh, we can say basic uh, information about the vitamin b or starting developing uh, deficiency problem if the person will uh, deficient the vitamin b1 now let's talk about that how uh, which types of problem it will be create so the main problem is the vitamin b1 berry 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 the twice the name berry berry actually berry berry is divided into two part wet berry berry and dry berry berry so wet berry berry let's discuss the wet berry berry wet berry berry also known as cardiovascular berry berry actually in this problem in a wet berry berry what will be happen that the person will be the all types of who like any person who suffering from this types of problem the the person's heart become dilated the all four chamber is become dilated so heart become dilated or we can say cardiomegaly cardiomegaly and this problem it lead to edema develop obviously if heart will not function well so edema automatically can be develop and edema mainly in a lower extremities then the calf muscles that is the lower extremities muscles calf muscles become weak so this problem is developed in the wet berry berry i mean wet uh, berry berry now let's talk about that dry berry berry what will happen in dry berry berry in the wet berry berry also due to dilation of the heart decrease uh, increase the systolic blood pressure decrease the diastolic pre uh, pressure and it can lead to the congestive heart failure also but in a very rare case in very uh, critical conditions so now we'll discuss about that dry berry berry actually dry, dry berry berry we can also say neurological berry 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 actually in this conditions the peripheral neuritis can be occur peripheral neuritis and it can lead to 
the slow movement because the peripheral nerve is the deficient so the uh, movement become decreased slow movement muscles become slow or we can say muscles they are very weak so this types of problem is developed in the dry berry berry now we'll discuss about that different types of problem uh, except the berry berry in very easy to remember that in a wet berry berry is the all problem which are initiate from the heart because the dilation of the heart so can lead to the edema in the lower extremities so uh, the calf muscles which are the lower extremities muscles are very weak so it, the person will not uh, we can say walk properly the pain can be uh, start and in that dry berry berry that is the neurological disorder means the peripheral neuritis the, the all types of peripheral nerve become deficient so it can lead to obviously the muscles weakness the person will not walk properly the person will not uh, we can say sit properly and pain can be uh, occur so this types of problem can be occur uh, in the very very now let's uh, discuss about another very very another very very the infantile very very or we can say childhood actually this problem is mainly occur so infantile very very actually this problem mainly in those baby who is depend on the feeding or the they uh, drinking the breast milk like the mother breast milk so and those mother who suffering from thiamine deficiency vitamin b1 deficiency so obviously if they don't have enough vitamin b1 so uh, the vitamin b1 will not coming in the milk so on those baby will suffer from vitamin b uh, vitamin b1 deficiency that's what name is the infantile berry berry so those uh, baby have maybe sleepiness restlessness and uh, sometimes convulsions effects can be there that's why this information also is known for example sleepiness sleepiness restlessness then convulsions because this baby is not taking another source of any uh, food they depend on the feeding that's where this types of problem can be occur but it's very rare because uh, vitamin b1 is the if they will use if they will not take in a long time then this problem can be there but if you compare to the fat soluble vitamin it's a very fast uh, i mean appearance for example because the fat soluble vitamin if the person will not take for example if five days if in a five days they will not take any fat soluble vitamin but our body can be compensate because the from the storage sources for example in liver so from the liver they will release and they can be compensate but if we talk about the water soluble vitamin they will not compensate because they don't have any storage point so the the deficiency the hypobetonosis can be developed very fast as compared to the fat soluble even in one day in two day the appearance can be developed that's where this information very important to know next deficiency that is the वेर्नी वेर्नी के कोर्साकोफ कोर्साकोफ सिंड्रोम स्पेलिंग इज नॉट करेक्ट बट दोनसिएशन लाइक दैट वेर्नी के कोर्साकोफ सिंड्रोम कोर्साकोफ सिंड्रोम एक्चुअली दिस प्रॉब्लम विल मेनली ऑकर इन द दो पर्सन इज अ क्रॉनिक एल्कोहलिज्म सो ड्यूरिंग द क्रॉनिक एल्कोहलिज्म सो let's talk chronic alcoholism actually during the alcoholic chronic alcoholism the body need more thiamine the demand is increase so for example if i will taking normal vitamin b1 but along with the vitamin b1 i also taking a, a lot of alcohol on the time i need to take more vitamin b1 you know means uh, we need to increase the Uh, vitamin B one. 
but those person who's taking chronic alcoholism they don't know this uh, information and they thought that i'm taking normal vitamin b1 but due to the chronic alcoholism increase the absorption of vitamin b1 and vitamin b1 will be deficient in the body due to the chronic alcoholism so on the time vernic korsakoff uh, syndrome will be developed and this syndrome is also known as cerebral cerebellum beri 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 and this conditions what will be symptom appear first of all the movement problem movement problem because cerebellum is the mainly balance over the body so movement problem due to the neuron damage so obviously some motor functions also uh, interrupt and such kind of the polyneuritis can be appear uh, for example like involuntary movement involuntary movement can be interrupt so obviously if if we will know that this uh, syndrome is appear or this syndrome is the interrupt the cerebellum function so obviously we can understand that what is the main function of the cerebellum that the, it's a maintain our body balance so obviously movement can be we will not uh, the person will not move properly it will uh, they will not balance about the body like that problem can be appear that is the name wernicke uh, wernicke korsakoff syndrome or cerebellum beri beri so this 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 two are the main uh, uh, deficiency of the vitamin b1 beri beri and wernicke korsakoff syndrome so now let's talk about that what is the normal amount of the vitamin b1 should be take in normal person so for the adult person from 1 to 1.5 g should be take from the child 0.7 to 1.2 mg sorry it's not gram it's mg for the pregnant lady or i um, mean feeding who is doing a lactation approximately 2 mg should be take in some books in some it can be decrease or increase these are the approximately value that we have to know so these are the main source of the i mean the recombinant daily therapy we can say rda recombination daily therapy about the hyperbitaminosis as i said that the all fat water soluble vitamin even in a hyperbitaminosis they will not start or they will not appear the uh, significant any side effects but as i said that uh, vitamin b1 is the if we talk about the some chemistry that it has pyrimidine pyrimidine plus thiazolidine thiazolidine this two cleavage bond this two bond as thiamine thiamine so some uh, food like sea food or some raw fish this types of uh, fishes or this types of we can say animal sources can be destroyed by this two ring and can lead to the vitamin b deficiency but it's a very very rare means those person who depend upon the sea food uh, de depend upon the raw fish so in those um, materials or this those foods have uh, thiaminase thiaminase and uh, pyrithiamine 
pythamine these two types of enzyme this enzyme is destroy the this two ring pyrimidine and thiazole ring and that's why the cleavage is the breakdown and that destroy the thiamine uh, molecule along with this two enzyme or also we can say that this two enzyme can be as a antidote or we can say it can be in a hypertoxic uh, hyperbitominosis can be used because it's anti metabolite the thiamine ring because they destroy the thiamine ring but as i said that the water soluble vitamin is a very rare uh, can be affect toxic effects that's why uh, this is uh, mainly most probably is not uh, no need for the this anti dodor anti metabolite of the thiamine after that the seafood and uh, some raw all types of seafood some types of some uh, research said that during the caffeine the regular use regular or we can say regular very high amount very high amount can be somehow or some percent of the uh, decrease the or we can say destroy the thiamine ring but not significant very rare and very some 1% or 2% we can say that can be uh, harmful for the those person who is taking this types of food so this is all information about the vitamin b1 that really we have to know or we should know in next uh, time we will discuss about the vitamin b2 so hope you will enjoy you will like our discussion about the vitamin b1 till then thank you and take care